electrical efficiency and reliability. For the contents of this presentation, first I will talk about normal OFDM and OFDM with SPM and see the effect of the SPM on the normal OFDM subcarrier. Then after that, we will talk in deep about space-time block coding and how it works. Also, how we implement it with space-time block with OFDM SPM and see the diversity and his type. Then I will explain the automotive block code and how it works. So at the end, we will see the results and discuss them. Then I will conclude all this work. First of all, while the demand for high data rate is increasing day by day and the radio spectrum becoming more crowded, there is a need to design a technique for higher spectrum efficiency. As OGMSPM, with remote space time block coding. So the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing with subcarrier power modulation, certainly a promising transmission technique for 5G and future communication, such as 6G. By saving any transmission power and higher spectral efficiency, also in low latency. And also in this presentation, we will see how we integrate the OFDM SPM with a remote space time block coding to see his effect on the performance parameter of the wireless system. <coughs> we analyze the two main performance, bit error rate and the throughput for OFDM, SPM, and space time block coding technique. The bit error rate is the number of error bits over the number of all data bits that have been transmitted. And for the throughput, the throughput means the speed of the data that have been also transmitted. And also we take two scenario that for OFDM, SBM, and space time block coding transmission, the first one is power reassignment policy, and the second one is power saving policy. In power saving policy, we save the extra power to match the requirement for the low power application, such as Internet of Things. And for the power reassignment, there are two types. The first one is optimized power reassignment, and the second one is non-optimized power reassignment. <clears throat> the difference between optimized and non-optimized that in optimized, the power is going to low and high power subcarrier. And in non-optimized, the power is only going for high power subcarrier. My contribution is to increase the performance for the bit error rate and spectral efficiency by using a technique called Alamuti space time block coding for an OFDM SPM conventional design, which have been designed to improve the spectral efficiency and the bit error rate, and also low latency with good reliability and low complexity. But the performance is not good enough so that we use a technique called remote space time block coding to improve the performance of OFDM SPM mode. So this figure shown the constellation point of OFDM SPM with BBSK modulation. This number is the symbol that are transmitted over the subcarrier and the power subcarrier also the normal BBSK and EV mean the amplitude of the signal. Also, H, we can say that H take one for high and zero take and low take zero for low. In this figure shown the normal OFDM subcarrier and OFDM with SPM subcarrier. As we can see, the subcarrier are orthogonal to each other because we don't want to have intersymbol interference. And these numbers are the normal bit carries by BBSK and each symbol, as you can see here, carry one bit. Also, we can say each 
All of them channel consist of 128 to 2048 subcarrier and occupy bandwidth from 1.25 megahertz to 20 megahertz. So after apply SPM here, we can see that each symbol carry two bits. The first bit came from BBS K modulation and the second bit came from power subcarrier, as I mentioned before, one for high and zero for low. For example, for example, let's say we have 104 bits were required to transfer. The normal OFDM BBSK, since it's carry only one bit per subcarrier, will require 104 subcarrier for bandwidth and power, such that the resources used by normal OFDM is 104 bandwidth and 104 power. But after apply SPM here, would require only 52 subcarrier as each subcarrier carry two bit and the total resource are used is 52 bandwidth and 52 for power. So space time block coding Compared to a conventional single antenna system, the channel capacity of multiple antenna system with NT transmitters and NR receivers antenna can be increased by a factor of minimum NT and NR without using additional transmission power of spectral bandwidth. Multi-input single output technique can be divided into two main Category the diversity and spatial multiplexing. And for the diversity, in terms to receive the same inf information bearing sing signal in multiple antenna or transmit them from multiple antenna, thereby improving the transmission re reliability. And in the other hand, the spatial multiplexing, in terms to multiple independent data stream, are simultaneously transmitted by the multi the multiple transmission antenna, thereby achieving a high transmission speed. There are four types of the diversity. The first one is spatial diversity, and the spatial diversity means uh, sufficiently separated. The multiple antennas are used to implement independent wireless channel. And the second one is polarization diversity, or the independent channel is is implementing using the fact of vertically and horizontally polarized. The third one is time diversity, and that means is the same information is repeatedly transmitted at sufficiently separated time. And the last one is frequency diversity, or the same information is repeated, retransmitted at sufficiently separated frequency band. And here is the 3D representation of various diversity techniques. As you can see here in the figure, in time diversity, the data are transmitted over multiple time slots. And in the frequency diversity, the same data are transmitted at multiple spectral bands to achieve the diversity gain. At the end, the spatial diversity, the data are transmission in multiple antenna. Let's talk about a multi-block code. The diversity technique a multi-block code is a complex space-time diversity technique that can be used in MISO or MIMO system. Also, the Alamuti code is the only complex block code that has data rate of one while achieving a maximum diversity gain. And in the, in the left figure below shown the Alamuti block code a 3D representation. As you can see, there are two time slots in two different spaces operating on a single frequency. Also, we can see that the contain of time slot two are the conjugate of the data held in adjusting previous time slot one. And here proving the statement that a multi-block code is a complex space time diversity technique. And briefly, as you can see here, in the right figure, there are two antenna are used to send two 
of M symbol and their conjugate in two time slots, which bring the diversity gain without having a compromise in the data rate. <coughs> Over the air, the transmitted symbol will be suffered from the channel fading, and at the receiver, we will receive the symbols. Here is the transmitter. The, here is the transmitter system model of of the MSBM with space-time block coding. The first block is the incoming bit, and the incoming bit are the data of the system. Then we divide the, the data to two half. The first half is going for subcarrier power location, and the second half going for symbol modulator BBSK. Then we assign the symbol to subcarrier then send them to a remote system. And as I explained before, we send the data into two antenna and take the inverse fast Fourier transform IFFT to convert a signal from frequency to time domain. Then add the cyclic prefix to compact the interference in a multiple channel. For example, the first antenna take the phase subcarrier X1 and the second Subcarrier X2 for antenna 2 in the first time slot 1. And for the second time slot, we send the conjugate of the subcarrier for antenna 1, we send minus X2 conjugate, and for antenna 2, we send X1 conjugate to make sure there is no interference between the symbols. And here is the receiver system model of OFDM SPM with space time block coding. At the receiver side, after receive the signal, we remove the cyclic defects that have been added in the transmitter side. Then, then we, we take the FFT to convert a signal from frequency to time domain. And after that, we make STBC equalization to equalize the highest performance channel, then remove the non-carrier and non-carrier mean the subcarrier that didn't have data. In the end, we detect the bit after converted from parallel to series, and finally we receive the bit. What is phase shift king and binary phase shift king? Actually, in phase shift king, phase of the carrier wave, which is analog in nature and is switched as beer input digital signal. And this is analog to phase modulation. And this phase modulation is analog phase modulation technique since we have different type of modulation. The first one is digital modulation technique and the second one is analog modulation technique. On the other hand, for binary, uh, binary phase shift king and why it's called binary, because the phase of the carrier wave is modulated by binary symbol one and zero. Since we have two symbols, one and zero, therefore, in digital input, we have two symbols, which are binary symbols. Here is example of BBSK modulation. There is the digital, here is digital modulation with digital input signal, which is 1001101 in figure A and in figure B shown the BBSK signal. So in BBSK, we will switch the phase shift according to digital input. And in digital input, we can see is it changing from 1 to 0 so that there is a phase shift of by, as you can see here clearly in figure B. After Compared after we move from one to zero, there is a phase shift of pi. And now in, we are in the second digit, which, which is equal to zero. And when, when we move on, there is no phase shift because from zero to zero, there is no changing. So the signal will stay continuous. And this is how the BBSK modulation works. And in this, Figure we can see the BBSK bit and the phase shift by between the two bit one and zero. In the result, 
after applies base time block coding in power saving scenario. As I explained before, the power saving, we save the extra power to match the requirement for the low power application. As we can observe from this result diagram, in the case of normal OFDM SPM to getting a 10 to minus 3 bit error rate, we need around 30 dB to send the subcarriers. While after implementing the space time block coding technique, we need only 20 dB to achieve the same bit error rate, which means that the space time block coding technique make the same result saving additional power which is suitable for internet of things and here for the robot in space time block coding is better than the previous technique which is o of the sbm at lower snr value and at how at higher snr value the signal power increase and the noise level become low and in this state the space time gain almost benches as can be seen from the figure here. So, the second scenario is power reallocation BDC with OFDM, SBM, STBC. In this figure, we can see the red line for BBSK error and the black line related to the power and the blue line for the average error of BBSK and power. So, and as shown in this figure also, the cutting curve here shown the space time block coding result. So, here after applying space time block coding technique in non optimized, which is the power is going for high power subcarrier, is make a marginal improvement in the bit array. For example, at 10 to power minus 3 bit array, we need at 10 dB to send the subcarrier, while the conventional model OFDM SPM need around 25 dB to achieve the same bit error rate. Also, the robot in this figure is almost similar to the power saving policy at lower SNR with, with space time block coding is better than the previous technique. So, as the last scenario is optimized our reallocation policy with OFDM, SPM, and space time block coding. And as I mentioned before, the optimized power reallocation means the power is going for high and low power subcarrier. So, here, as we notice from the figure, the space time block coding technique is made. A lot of improvement in the bit array. For example, to get a 10 to, to power minus 3 average bit error rate, we need around 27 dB to send the subcarrier, and only we need around 16 dB to achieve the same bit error rate. And for the robot, which is the speed of the data that have been transmitted is almost the same without any effect. So, in the end, we conclude that the Alamuti space time block coding is a simple MISO technique that can be used to reduce the bit rate of the system at specific SNR without any losses on the data rate. And also a multi block code proving a highly spectral efficiency data transmission with low latency and less complexity. At the end, we achieve extra power at the same bit rate as I explained in the result part. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. So thank you, Abdurrahman, for your presentation. Now we move to the question side. I, let's start from Dr. Shahram. Thank you, Abu Ghamar, for your presentation. It was very nice. 
Uh, I don't have any question. Thank you again. Thank you too. Any questions from the student side? No, thank you so much. Okay, uh, just one last question from my side. So, so Abdul Rahman. Yes, sir. sir. One question to you. Which companies do you think are going to be interested in this technique that you have explained to us? Actually, sir, I think this uh, technique is useful for the uh, Internet of Things device uh, is because the, uh, we improve extra power, we save extra power, and this is suitable to Internet of Things device so that I think the Internet of Things company is more interested in this technique. So the Internet of Things companies and uh, cellular mobile companies as well. Yes. yes. Cellular yes. mobile companies like Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei, Qualcomm, Broadcom, all these companies are working on techniques that can improve the power efficiency and reduce the bit error rate. So what's your plan? How are you going to contact these companies? to let them know about your technique. Actually, will, you no. them, will, will you share with them your uh, pieces after you finish it and talk to them about the advantages of this proposed technique? Yes, of course. So, but first, I want also to try another technique to improve the bit, or the bit error rate more. Then maybe can we get a chance? Maybe so, this, this yeah. is not enough uh, for the Internet of Things device, maybe we need to improve it more so that maybe after we use uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence to improve the bit error rate, maybe we can get a great chance to interact with them or something like this. Okay, this is very great. I, I, as far as I understand from uh, what you mentioned, you are planning to improve the bit error rate performance of the proposed technique furthermore and this, this time you are going to uh, like take some techniques from the machine learning domain or artificial intelligence domain yes. and the reason for that is to reduce complexity so you, your next step is to improve the performance while reducing the complexity so your proposed technique might be able to provide good performance but the complexity might be still high to avoid that, you are going to introduce more novel techniques, hopefully to reduce that complexity issue that can uh, that can result from the existing technique that you have just explained to us. Yes. So I think I think uh, Dr. Shahram, I think this is a good direction to combine like the machine learning domain with the communication domain, especially at the receiver side. Mm -hmm. Yes, Hojam, I think so. I think if he can combine it within, uh, like, till the end of his, if his duration, it would be very great. And compare the advantages and disadvantages, the pros and cons, it would be really nice. Uh, we don't know, uh, we just want to, uh, want you to work on that to prove to us that which technique is better, machine learning detection, machine learning based detection, or conventional based detection. And uh, what are the advantages of each of these techniques and the least advantages? I think nobody has worked on this before, especially with the ORTM SPM, since it's a new transmission method. So you are going to be the first one to investigate this. Yeah, you can uh, declare related to this. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's, a, it's going to be a very good direction. So then I think we reach to the end of our seminar. Thank you everybody for joining us today and thanks for the presenters and a special thanks for Dr. Shahram for joining us and uh, uh, hopefully he will be also uh, helping us also in the machine learning part of these algorithms. And take care everybody. Thank you one more time, and we we are looking forward to listen and hear your presentation as well in the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Jan.
Thank you. Nice Thank you for joining us. Goodbye, Thank everyone. You, sir. You too. You too. Take care.